serve thy enemies. So Moses told them again, giving them warning. He said, because y'all broke God's commandments, you're going to serve your enemies, not your friends, your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. So God sent our enemies against us because we broke his commandments. We didn't want to obey God. Right. Just like if you had a child, right, and they didn't listen to what you said, you're not going to give them a reward. You're going to beat them, punish them, whatever you do in your household. God punished us by putting us in captivity. Because we think that we're trying to fight for equality with these other nations. That's right. We don't want equal rights. You can't have equal rights in captivity. Right. Why would your oppressors put you on the same level as them? Bring it out. Instead, they will put you in captivity and tell you that you're nothing. But let's see what the Bible says. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. But the Bible says you're a holy people. How you doing, sis? How you doing, sis? Well, we want to hear what... Come over here and talk with us, sis. What is love? You say you love us, sis. Well, what's love according to the Bible? I'll tell you what the problem is, sis. You're not out here to learn the Bible. I know why you're out here, sis. And it's a plague that's populating all our community. Bring it out. You have to change, sis. You have to change. Because we're tired of our sisters being taken advantage of. Right. I'm going to tell you straight, sis. We're tired of our women getting treated like whores. That's right. We know that up and down these streets, there's drugs, there's prostitution, there's homeless people, there's fighting, there's shootings and killings. We're tired of seeing that, and we're not going to play with our people. Walk out of that lifestyle of prostitution. Teach. Your body is not worth any price. You're supposed to be a pearl on this earth. And you give up that pearl as if it was a pig. Bring it out! As if it was worth nothing. Stop selling your body in society. Stop prostituting. Stop selling drugs to each other. Stop fighting each other. Right. We are the prophets. We are your brothers. We are here to tell you the truth according to the Bible. Teach. We are here for the kings of the earth, like those brothers in front of the store. Y'all supposed to be kings on the earth. But they don't tell you that. They keep that truth from you because they want to rule over you. But when you're going to get tired of being oppressed, being robbed, being spoiled. When are you get, going to get tired of living in that state? Read that. Read that Deuteronomy. Seven, six, yes. So we want to show you that you're a chosen people according to God because they'll tell you that everybody can get into heaven and everybody's chosen, but that's not according to the Bible. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Hey, family, I'll come over. Pull up for five minutes. We're showing you that you're holy. You're supposed to be chosen according to God. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Brother, how you doing, brother, in the blue shirt? What does it mean to be special when Bring you're up. special? What does that mean? If you have a special pair of shoes, right, would you just throw it with the other shoes? No. Because you don't care about it? You weren't treated like that, right? What would you do for those special shoes? They got a, they got a special place, right? Certain place. You might clean them. Right? Right, right. I got you. It might not mean nothing to you, but a lot of our people have special possessions. God has a special possession. It's you. Bring it out. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Read that again. The Lord thy God have chosen thee. Hey, if you got five minutes, see what we're talking about, because you're not going to hear this truth nowhere else. What's your name? Say that again? Travis. Travis? Okay. So Travis, we might only be out here for you. And I say that because the angels rejoice over one soul. That's right. We only want one soul to hear this truth and change. Right. Are you living in the best conditions of society? Bring it out. You got a mansion? Nah, yeah. No, you, you got 40 acres? Nope. No, you don't have that, right? We in the hood. Nah. The slums, the ghettos. If we go to Washington, D.C., we go to California, what people gonna be in the hood? Blacks? Hispanics and Native Americans. That's, that's it. Right. And that's a curse that was put upon our people when you're supposed to be a God on this earth. Right. But let's see what happened. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 15. You know, you know the history with Moses? You know who Moses is, right? Well, Moses, he was the mediator for us to God. Right. He went to God and got the law, statutes, and commandments from God. And Moses delivered it to our forefathers and foremothers. But what happened is we rejected the laws of God. We didn't want to do them. And that's why he killed most of the people in the wilderness. 
And just like today, we are delivering the word to our people, but they don't want to hear it, and God is going to kill off our people again. Didn't he flood the earth with Noah? Right. Didn't he only save eight people and killed everybody else? So it's not far-fetched that God is going to kill everybody else again and save a small amount of people. Bring it out. But you want to get in heaven, right? Everybody do, right? But let's see why we fell away. Deuteronomy 28, 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. So this is Moses speaking to the Israelites, showing them a future prophecy. Read. But it shall come to pass, if thou art not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses told the Israelites, if y'all didn't listen to what God said, read. To observe to do all his commandments. So if they didn't listen to do God's commandments, right. And his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So Moses told them if they didn't listen to God, all these curses are going to come upon them. Read the next verse. Curse shall there be in the city. Now I want you to think. He told the Israelites prophecies of the future generations that they're going to be cursed in the city, right? Bring it out. Are our people cursed in the city? Are we cursed? You feel like it? Why, why would you say you cursed? I want you to give me some examples. What about, what about working every day? Are you ever going to uh, get to a better state by working every day or are you getting check by check? Check by check, nah. It's just everything has been taken. Everything's everything been taken, right? What about us shooting each other in the streets, selling drugs to each other? Prostitution that happens right here in this society. And we're going to talk about it too because we want our women to stop acting like whores. Right. We want our brothers to stop selling drugs to each other. Stop fighting each other. Hurry up! Shooting each other right for no reason. Because I guarantee you, and I'm not saying you, but if we had another brother up here and somebody stepped on his shoes, that's a riot. That's a, whole riot. Right. That's a riot over shoes. When we once ruled the earth, we're fighting over shoes in a corner. It makes no sense, right? Save me with Travis. So we curse in the city. That's how we curse in the city. Read. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And we cursed in the field. How was our people cursed in the field? What were we doing in the field? Picking cotton, picking sugar cane, picking tobacco, picking sweet potatoes, building up their nations. We was cursed in the field. Now remember, he's telling this to the Israelites. Back then, most of them died in the wilderness, except two. They died. So this prophecy is for us today, right. showing you that you're an Israelite according to the Bible. Because the curses relate to you. Give me verse 46. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So the curses are going to be upon us for a sign. Because if I look at that sign, right, right there, that's a sign that says diesel. I know that that has diesel gas in its location. Just like I could look at you and by the signs of the conditions that you're in, I know you're the people of God. I know you're an Israelite. I know your nationality just by the sign of you being here. That's what he's saying. This curses are going to be upon us for a sign. Let's see what one of those signs are. Give me verse 48. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thy serve thy enemies. So Moses told them again, giving them warning. He said, because y'all broke God's commandments, you're going to serve your enemies, not your friends, your enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall sin against thee. So God sent our enemies against us because we broke his commandments. We didn't want to obey God. Right. Just like if you had a child, right, and they didn't listen to what you said, you're not going to give them a reward. You're going to beat them, punish them, whatever you do in your household. God punished us by putting us in captivity because we broke God's commandments. Read. In hunger and in thirst. And in hunger and in thirst. If you want food, where you got to go? Bring it out. Where you got that drink from just now? The store. The store. Your people own that store? No. It it's owned by the other nations. The other nations have benefited off the backs of the slaves, which is us. And that says that that's a curse upon our people because we didn't want to listen to God. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness for the clothes on your back. If you want clothes, you, got, you don't own any textile plants. You don't own the fabrics that makes those clothes. You got to go buy it from your enemies. Right? Read. And in want of all things. In want of all things. If you want education. You want a birth certificate. You want a death certificate. Religion, Christianity, all comes from your enemies because you broke God's commandments. And let's see what else happened. Read. 
And he, and he, that same enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Wait, so Moses said to the Israelites, if y'all broke God's commandments, y'all gonna have yokes of iron put upon your neck. Who had yokes of iron on their neck? We did, right. Who had yokes of iron upon their neck, brother? We did, right? The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So what it's saying is that because you had yokes of iron on your neck, because you have to serve your enemies for food, clothes, water, Christianity, education, religion, birth certificate, that shows that you are an Israelite according to the Bible. That's right. right. Because you're being ruled over by your oppressors. And they don't want you to know that truth. They want to call you a Negro, colored, Afro-American, which is a hairstyle, African-American, to keep you away from that God-given name of you being an Israelite. But we don't have yokes of iron on our neck today. Let's see why. Finish that verse. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. So once we are destroyed, boom, the yokes of iron come off. We think that Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. No. Bring it out. He just took the yokes off because you're already broken. Now we serve them without having yokes of iron upon our neck. Now we work for them. Now we have more respect for them without the yokes of iron. We are still in slavery today. Back then we knew who we were. Our That's people right. don't know who we are. Jeez. You don't know your nationality is an Israelite. You didn't know that either. Maybe you did know, but we're still in captivity to this day because we broke God's commandments. Let's get some more signs to show of who we are in case there's any doubt. Give me verse 68. These curses are gonna show you exactly who the Israelites are today. How do we get on this side of the earth? I wanna ask you. Travis, what's your name, brother? Desmond. Say it again. Desmond. Desmond. Travis and Desmond. How do we get on this side of the earth? Black people, how do we get in America? Bring it out. I'm not even sure. You're not even sure? That's okay. I'm not mad at that. How do we get on this side of the earth? Uh, they brought us here. They brought us here on what? Slave ships. On slave ships, right? That's how blacks got over here, right? Yeah. Is that in the Bible? No. You said no? Is that in the Bible? I haven't. You never read it? I've never read it. Okay, I'm cool with both of those answers. Let's see what the Bible says. Give me that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Bring it out! And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So remember, this is Moses speaking to the Israelites. They walked out of Egypt before, right? So it says that they're going to go back into Egypt again. They died in the wilderness. So this prophecy is not talking about them, but Teach. we have to figure out what Egypt means. The word Egypt is symbolic. It means something. Give me that. The book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So God brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt, right? Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is known as the house of bondage. What's right. another word for bondage? Bring it out. Trapped. Trapped. I like that. What's another word for bondage? Held captive. Held captive, exactly. Or slavery. Slavery, bondage, held captive, trapped. Those all are the same things. So Egypt is the house of bondage or the house of being trapped or the house of slavery. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. So remember that, what Egypt means, right? And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The Lord shall bring us into bondage again or slavery again. Let's see how. With ships. With what? With ships. You said we got over here on slave ships. He said the Israelites were going to be brought into bondage again on ships. Right. So again, that's showing you who the people of the Bible are. That's who right. Moses was speaking to back then were the Israelites. Warning them if they disobeyed God, this was going to happen. And everything he told them, it came to pass just the way he said it would happen. That's right. Read. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. By the way he said it was going to happen, that's exactly how it happened. Let's see how. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. We was not going to see our homeland no more again. He was telling the Israelites back then, y'all not going to see your homeland. What's your homeland? You say Africa, right? Africa is a big continent with over a hundred different countries in it. But I'm not mad at that answer. You say Africa. Okay, I like that answer too. What you say your homeland is? Egypt? What's going on, King? All right, What's your name? Daryl. Daryl? Yep. Okay, I'm going to try to remember everybody. Travis, Desmond, Daryl. Yep. Right? So, what would you say your homeland is? He said, he said Egypt. You said Jerusalem? You said Egypt? 
And you said Jerusalem and Africa. You said Africa first, but then Jerusalem. So we got to go to the Bible to see exactly what our homeland is. The Bible defines itself. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So it's talking about Jerusalem, right? Read. Which is the mother of us all. So Jerusalem is the motherland. Jerusalem is the mother of us all, according to the Bible. So when we say Africa, we can't just say Africa, right? Um, we got to go by what the Bible says. It says Jerusalem. Because yeah, right. Right. Africa is a big That's continent. Right. So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and finish that verse out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So God brought us into captivity again with ships. Read. By the way whereof I speak unto thee. The same way the Bible said it was going to happen, that's how it happened. Read. Thou shalt see it no more again. And we will not see Jerusalem no more again. We was never brought over there. Again, it's being ruled over by our oppressors. That's that right. calls themselves Jewish. Right. Meaning I'm something like a Jew. Or Israelite. Meaning I'm not really an Israelite. I'm not really a Jew, I'm Jewish. Something like the real Jews, but that's not me. The imposters have taken over the land. That's we, right. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So, we were sold to our enemies when we got off of those ships, not our friends. That's Jeez. prophecy in the Bible thousands of years before it even happened. Moses warned them about that, but we didn't believe. Right. And our people still don't believe some of these prophecies today. But we're out here to warn y'all to tell y'all wake up. Come back to your true nationality. Right. Come back to who you're supposed to be. Travis, Desmond, Daryl. You're supposed to be kings on this earth. That's right. Rulers of this earth. And that's ordained by God. Right. You shouldn't be ashamed of that. Finish that out. Ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And slave women. Read. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you, meaning nobody's going to save us out of our captivity. Right. Martin Luther King tried. Malcolm X tried. Marcus Garvey tried. Right. And failed because this curse was put upon us to show us who we are today. But they don't want you to know that. They want you to call yourself, what's, what's your nationality? I'm going to ask you. What's your nationality? Well, I know my true nationality. Though. You know your true nationality? Yeah. What did you call yourself before you knew your true nationality? Oh, uh, African American. Okay, African American. What's your nationality? I go black African -American. Said, you said black or African American? What's your nationality? True Hebrew. True Hebrew, right? Now, did you know that before coming here? Well, no. What did you call yourself before coming here? African American. African American, right. So African American, black. The, the word African American is a, is a byword. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and 37. African American. Africa comes from Leo Scipios Africanus. He was a European man that conquered the landmass of Africa by defeating General Hannibal and named it after himself. The word America is from Americo Vespucci. He was an Italian navigator that conquered this landmass and named it after himself. So when we call ourselves African American, we say we come from two European men. Right. Can anybody come from two European men? Two men in general? No, they can't have a child. We call ourselves black. Where's the land of black at? Teach. Where's the land of black? They put that in our uh, books. They put that in our history because they want you to think that you're Africans. You're right. not Africans. You're the real Jews according to the Bible. That's right. But they don't want you to know that truth. Because guess what? If I knew that you was an Israelite in this truth, give me a... Uh, matter of fact, let's get that first. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shall become an astonishment. So remember, Moses is giving them more warning over and over and over. Moses is giving them warning. He said we will come in astonishment. We're in astonishment at these other nations because they look at us and be like, dang, they were supposed to be kings. They were the rulers. Look at them. Look how we got them picking cotton. Look how we can tie one rope to one horse and a rope to another horse and let the horse pull them apart in right. front of his wife. Right. That's what they did to us in captivity. And they were astonished by like, wow, we did it. We destroyed them. Took the yokes of iron off. They was worried probably, took the yokes off. And then years went by, they're like, wow, we really destroyed them. Teach. The nations look at us as an astonished people, in shock. Read. A proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. If you want to hide something from a black man, where do you put it? If you want to hide something from a black man, where do you put it? In a book. In a book. Y'all said it at the same time. 
That's a proverb, a wise saying that they have upon our people. White men, uh, black men love watermelon. Black men love chicken. Those are proverbs. Chicken. Read. And a byword. And a byword, like African American. That's a byword. That's an insult. They saying you come from Europeans when you really don't. Make sure you check out that flyer, Travis, and call that number on the back. Read. Among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. Among all nations, we have a byword. Over here is is Negro, or colored, right. or spick, or push monkey. Over in Africa, they have a word for Negroes. It's called a kata, right. which also means nigger, right. or Negro. Those are words that's put on us in captivity. That's the rest of that? Yes, sir. Give me Leviticus 19, 17. So, all this knowledge, all this truth in the Bible that's been in the churches, but they don't want you to know who you're supposed to be. They don't teach you this because this is going to change you. Right. It's going to change you to become a better person, to have love for your brothers. But we don't have love for each other in society today. Right. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Do you have a brother? You got a brother? I do. You got a brother? So if a stranger walk up to you, right, and he say, hey, bro, don't shoot your brother today. Would you think that's kind of crazy? Like, why would you tell me not to shoot? He's my brother. Bro, what you talking about? Teach. But God said, don't hate our brother to us because he knew that there's a problem with our people. We show hatred towards each other. We don't see each other as brothers. Bring it out. We see each other as niggas that I can get over on. I can take money from them. I can sell drugs to them to benefit myself. We don't see each other as gods, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We don't see each other as kings on the earth. Read. Right. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So the Bible says you shouldn't have hatred for your brother in your heart. If y'all have a falling out, y'all have an issue, you correct them on it. And hopefully he say, all right, my bad, bro, my bad. You ain't got to go fight them later on. Right. Y'all ain't got to shoot the fade. You should be able to resolve your issues by saying, all right, my fault, man, my fault, bro. I know what I was thinking. And get over on it because that's your brother. Because it's almost like if you hit him, you hit yourself. You shoot him, you shoot yourself. Sell drugs to him, you sell drugs to yourself. Because the Bible says, love thy neighbor as what? Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Read. Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So we're not supposed to have any grudge against the children of our people. It's, it's sad to have to tell somebody not to hate their own family. Bring it out. But this is your family. This is my family at the gas stations. I see these as my brothers and sisters that I'm coming to bring this truth to. Right. Because I'm commanded to do a certain thing. What's that? Read. But thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I'm commanded to love my brother as I love myself. That's why I can't see y'all going in the conditions that y'all in. Right. I had to change my lifestyle. Because I was in the same lifestyle that y'all, that some of y'all are in. Some of our people are in. I had to change for my brothers. Right. I got tired of seeing my brothers locked up. My cousin that ain't getting out. Jeez. My sisters having drugs sold to them. Being whored out, being prostituted. Right. I got tired of that stuff and I had to change myself to be an example to them. To show them that it's a better way. Jeez. But they won't show you that because they want your image to be destroyed. It starts with one person. It starts with one person changing. That's it. But they don't want you to change. And they put an image up for you to never prosper in society. They put a false image up for you to never prosper in society. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.